Hello, I'm Eric Rello, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. And in this video, we're gonna look at double exposures. We're gonna make a double exposure, and then we're gonna go the extra mile to make something a little bit more interesting and artistic. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and I've got three images all ready to go. Now they all come to me from Photolia, and more details can be found alongside this post. You can see we've got a bearded man, a tree, and then a background texture as well. Okay, with the bearded man, the first thing I want to do is actually create a mask of him. So I'm gonna go over to my quick selection tool and then make a quick selection, as the name might suggest. Now, how careful you are with this is entirely up to you. It will make a bit of a difference a little bit later on. But you'll notice I'm not too worried about his hair sticking out there. For me, that's not a major issue. Okay, let's make a mask on there, and now we've masked him off. Now we need the tree layer. There's a few ways to get a new layer into Photoshop. The way I'm going to do it is use the rectangular marquee tool, right click on the image, duplicate layer, and then choose here from the document, the bearded man. Click OK. I get this little dialog box, that's fine for this image. I'm gonna go back to my bearded man, and sure enough, there it is. All right, now what I want to do here is to put the tree just so it's within the outline of the bearded man. So I'm gonna utilize that mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab that mask from my man layer and bring that up onto the tree. There we go. While I'm here, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Let's say that's the man and we'll call this one tree just so we all know where we're at. Now, what we want to do here is we want to move the tree and the mask independently. Now you'll see there's a link between the tree layer and the mask. If I click on that, it disappears. So now I can move the tree as much as I like with inside that mask. So with the layer selected, I can go to Edit and Free Transform, and then start pulling this out to how I want it to be. So in this case, what I want is for the tree to sort of hit his beard and come out there. Now you notice that I'm not constraining the proportions here at all, not really worried about that. There we go. Let's bring the opacity down, so we can do that on later versions of Photoshop. We can bring down the opacity as we transform. I'm gonna zoom out using Control or Command minus, just so as I can give it a little bit more interest there. Maybe bring that one down a little bit. There we go, just so it matches his shoulders a bit, really. There we go. All right, click the tick. To fit the image back on screen, I'm going to press Control or Command zero. And then I'm going to start playing with the blending modes of the tree layer. So I'm going to bring the opacity right back up again and try some different blending modes. Multiply, and maybe something like screen. Okay, and then something like soft light might work nicely. And I'm pretty sure that in this case, vivid light works nicely too. All right, now what I want to do is just actually take off this layer, the visibility of the man, and you'll see that now we just have the tree inside the man. Let's take uh, a little bit of saturation out of that. So I'm gonna use the hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring the saturation down quite a bit, somewhere around there perhaps. And then I'm gonna clip this using the Alt or Option key just to that one below so I can see what's going on. All right, that's looking good. Now we could stop there, but let's go a little bit further. What I want to do is make this a little bit more artistic and blend it down with the background layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, hue saturation and the tree layer, and then what I'm gonna do is hold down Shift and Alt, that's Shift and Option, and click on the Create a New Group. When I do that, it puts them both into a group I'm gonna call Tree, and there we go, all wrapped up. Nice bit of housekeeping on the fly. Now what I want to do is create what's called a luminance mask. Now there is already a tutorial on tipscroll.com about luminance masks, but we'll still go over it here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the tree group and turn on my man because that's my point of reference. Then go over to channels and then have a look through the red, the green and the blue just to find a layer of contrast. Actually, red is what I'm looking for. Now what I've got here is a lot of bright areas on the skin, as you might expect, and those are the areas that I want to pick up. 
So using the control or command key, I can go and click on the thumbnail of the red layer, and sure enough, it makes a selection of all the lightest areas of this image. Let's go back to RGB, back to layers, and turn off man, and turn on the visibility of tree. Then what I want to do is I want to press Alt, and then create a mask. Now what we've done there by pressing the Alt is we've reversed the mask. So now we've got everything except the lightest areas of that mask. So the darkest areas coming up to the lightest. Now that's really not dark enough for me really. So let's make sure the mask is selected and press Control or Command L to bring up the levels. Now this is destructive, sorry about that, but you know, let's, let's go for it. I'm going to bring up the left hand one. We can always go back and grab a new luminous mask. That's not a major problem. So bring up this one. You can see I'm making it a bit darker. I'm bringing up the black point and this one is the white point. Bringing that in. And then this mid-tones here, I can bring up just to reduce some of the gray areas around his eyes there that I don't want. And click OK. Now we can take this layer or this group and we can put it into any blending mode we like. But let's go and get a background layer to start with. There we go, I'm going to use exactly the same. There we go, and bearded man. Okay, and then drop that down to the bottom. This does look like it needs a little bit of playing around with, so let's do that. Again, using Control T, just to transform this out. There we go, cool, click the tick. Control zero to fit back on. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the group and you'll see that this has got pass through. Now the pass through blending mode that you see within the group here, that means that everything that's happening within the group will also be going down into the layers below. It's not quite what we want. So what I'm going to do is take the pass through and change it to maybe to something like color burn or um, maybe something like multiply. One of these darker ones up here. I like color burn. Let's try linear burn. All right. Color burn looks nice. All right, and then I can reduce the opacity if I wanted to, just to give it a little bit of finesse. So there we go, all nice. Let's do one last thing. Let's put all of these into a new smart object. And once it's in a smart object, we can run all kinds of filters on it. And my favorite from here is actually running the camera raw filter. So I go to filter, camera raw filter, and now I can do all kinds of things here as well. I can increase the contrast should I wish. I can bring down those blacks, maybe even bring up the highlights if I wanted to, but let's bring those down and even add a little bit of clarity as well. But what I really want to do is come over to the effects and add a post crop vignette just to bring this all together a little bit. Let's bring the midpoint in a little bit maybe. All right, and that out. There we go. Very quickly you can see I'm starting to finesse this exactly as I want it to be. Okay. Click OK. So there we go. We've made a double exposure and an artistic double exposure. I'm Eric Freno. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come over to tipsquirrel.com where we've got a whole host of great writers and presenters waiting to help you with Photoshop, Lightroom and everything associated with them. Until next time, bye-bye for now.